Yeah, kids all came to Glen. They came, yes. I have one. I have one more hope. One, one last hope. She's in seventh grade, so we'll see. Um, so that's number one. Uh, number two. So the actual curriculum itself, I think, is super interesting. Um, we are a humanities-based program, which means that we um, all, within the specialty center, you take three classes a year. And so your social studies class and your English class are center classes. And then you take another elective class, which is usually either educational or psychology-based. Um, and those classes are taken within this, the cohort of the 75 students that will be in your cohort. Um, and then everything else that you take, your science, your math, your foreign language, is taken in the comprehensive high school. So, you know, we do have a demanding curriculum. Every class you take is either honors or AP. There are five required AP classes that you take. Um, AP English language, AP English literature, AP psychology, AP US history, and AP government. So your, your social studies and English APs that you take. Um, so those are like kind of required. But Glen Allen has a plethora of other AP classes that you can take in math and science and foreign language as well that you take in the comprehensive high school. But that's kind of like how sort of our, our center operates or works. Um, this next bullet point really important to me. Um, when I built the program, when I kind of hired the teachers and professional learning of the teachers, you know, we had this vision of we don't want all of our center classes to be like this, like what I'm doing now, which is like teacher front of the room, just like giving instruction to you, and then students, you just like taking fill in the blank notes and then just like regurgitating that back out on a multiple choice test. That's boring, I don't like it, I don't think students learn that way. So when we designed the curriculum, we really designed it so that students get a chance to apply their learning in a variety of different contexts, authentic contexts. So maybe students are kind of, you know, like doing some sort of project-based learning in my class and they're like, they're designing a solution to an issue and they are actually like presenting that issue to like stakeholders in Henrico County. I was just part of a, a class this morning in which they were, they were addressing chronic absenteeism in Henrico County. They did a whole bunch of research on it and they were presenting their solutions. They are talking about like the parking issue at Glen Allen High School that we have. Like real issues that they identify, they research, they figure it out, and then they're presenting them to real people. So like we are both, this is Ms. Rakowski, teaches the child growth class, we are both project-based learning certified. So a lot of our curriculum that we create has students working in groups, thinking about problems, on asking a lot of why questions, which makes for, I think, a much more engaging classroom as opposed to me just telling you what to do, you write it down, and then you give it back to me. I don't think a whole lot of learning transfer happens that way. Um, this next one right here uh, is really important to me. Junior Achievement is the program how I got in, interested in teaching. Um, I did Junior Achievement when I was in the business world, and basically Junior Achievement is a nonprofit organization that teaches personal finance and economics. Um, and I got into the schools and I was like, whoa, I want to do that. I don't want to be looking at my, my, my Excel spreadsheets and profit and law stuff. So I went back to school to do that. And so I now take my students, I partner with Junior Achievement, I take my students, my seniors, to Highland Springs Elementary School and we do what's called JA in a day. And so I take all my students there and we teach the entire Junior Achievement curriculum, K through five, to those students. And they get that experience of what it's like to be in the classroom for a full day. Um, if you want to be a teacher, that's awesome. If you're not interested in education, it's still awesome because you get to see, and there's a lot of skills that I'll talk about here in a second that you develop through all these different experiences that you have. Um, we do have a lot of mentoring opportunities. We do a cup companion program with Glen Allen Elementary. We do another kind of like mentoring program with Greenwood Elementary School. We work with Hungry Creek School, um, Middle School. So you, there's are a lot of opportunities for mentoring as well. And the last bullet point I think is really important. Um, the Specialty Center at Glen Allen is not a separate place. It's not a separate center. When you come to Glen Allen High School, you take your three classes, your three center classes, um, but it's not your whole world. You are a Glen Allen Jaguar, and I think that's really important. I mean, high school is fun, and high school is what you make of it, but all of my center students, and Danny's right here, right? She plays volleyball. Like, you're on the volleyball team, you're on the basketball team. You're, you know, playing in the marching band. You're, you know, you're in chorus. You're in band, you're in, the, you're in the school play. So you're really all kind of Glen Allen Jaguars, and we're not kind of in this corner where all we do is talk to other center students. You really get, I think you're really, because of the culture that we build at Glen Allen, you're part of battle for classes, and you're really part of like the whole Jaguar atmosphere. So I think that's also a, a great mm -hmm. part of our program too. And I, I think it's important, because high school is not just a couple classes, it's, it's more than that. Even though the community we have, that we have I think is very tight. 
Um, this is just a picture of us at doing junior achievement at Highland Springs Elementary School from a few years ago. So I keep this slide up here every year because I do think in the community when I talk to, to parents and students that because of the name they assume that the, the center is only for people that want to be teachers when they're in eighth grade. Um, and I'm here to tell you that that's not true at all. Um, we do very much, I believe in the concept of these buzzwords that that we that teachers like we have these posters that hopefully don't have them in this room, but posters like called like the Henrico Learner Profile, right? With like these these school these these skills of collaboration and critical thinking and communicating. I think we do an excellent job of like embedding those skills into all of our lessons, and that's awesome if you want to be a teacher. But it's also awesome if you want to be a doctor, or if you want to be a lawyer, or if you want to be an engineer, or if you want to be a human resource manager, you know, or you want to create a social media, you know, empire. Um, really, whatever you want to do, I've had students do that that have graduated from the program. I have had plenty of students that have gone through and want to be teachers and become teachers. And I think that's fantastic because there's a teacher shortage and we need more teachers. <laughs> but if you don't know what you want to do, this is also a great place for you too. Because it's going to get you whatever, I will help you get and we will help you get to whatever, wherever you want to go. So I don't want it to be a barrier. But if you want to, I, I've actually had a lot of luck converting people to education because they see how like I think they really see how much we love our jobs and how much impact we have which I think is also like an awesome part of our program too um, so the here's our curriculum so you know freshman year you take world history 2 with me and you take English with another sort of center teacher and then your main elective is with Ms. Rakowski child growth and development that's an intro level psychology class um, you know, really, the name kind of says it a lot, but they're really kind of studying the brain, studying how we develop from birth to adulthood. And Ms. Rakowski is a very engaging, interesting, funny teacher, and the students kind of like, kind of like you know, uh, flock to her and really enjoy her class. And she does an excellent job with that, kind of like setting the tone, I think, for the year or for the program. Then we have AP Psychology, which is kind of a level up. Like, it's your first AP class, sophomore year, um, again, talking about a lot of similar concepts. Um, it's a it's a it's a AP level curriculum, but you've already gotten a head start in child growth and development. So this seems to be almost like a breeze for a lot of the students because it's like, you know, you're learning similar concepts but much more in depth. Um, technology and communications in the 21st century is a uh, an elective in the special center right now that um, where students really like kind of learn how does technology impact society in a variety of different ways. So right now, like students just kind of finished a project on like looking at like you know artificial intelligence and how does artificial intelligence impact you know schools, impact society. They did a bunch of research on it. They did presentations on it, um, and then they, they go on. They build their own websites. They learn how to code. They look at the different technological tools that schools use and how they change over time. Um, so that's kind of technology and communication. Also focusing on that communication piece. I think communication is a, is a hallmark of our program where students really learn good public speaking skills. So that's in, embedded in that curriculum as well. Um, junior year, rigor bumps up. Junior year is tough for everybody. But we, you have AP English um, language, AP US history. And then I think two of our, our big time classes, which these two are semester classes, Instructional Design and Foundations of Teaching and Learning. But we've gone to, two years ago, I changed it to a co-teaching model where two teachers teach 50 students. So you get simultaneously both classes. Um, Instructional Design and Foundations of Teaching are, are, are very much project-based learning classes. So an example of that is the open house. I am the client. I tell them, here's the issue. You gotta put on an open house for a certain number of students. You design it, you do whatever you want. Here's what we've done before, but it doesn't have to be the same. And so they literally create the entire night when you come on November 16th, they're there. And they are really freaking out because things are going <laughs> wrong, but you don't know what's going wrong because they've, like, they've worked so hard in their groups and they have, you know, they, they've had leaders and they've picked the speakers and they, you know, technology doesn't work, but they problem solve that night. And the night's always a success. Um, in this class also, they also do the Vaughn kind of TED talk where um, all students, it's become this capstone of our program, where all students junior year in, the, uh, in May do a 10 minute speech on stage in front of like two to 300 people, a topic that they have researched, so sociology, education, or psychology, they write, they write a paper, they give the speech, and it is like amazing in terms of the community of support from each other. You know, some of the speeches are amazing, some of them are 
not that good, but they, <laughs> but they, but, but I love it because they do it and they overcome that and you see the support and the growth in all the students is fantastic and the skills they, and it's a success story. Um, in the foundations of teaching and learning part, you know, that is more nuts and bolts teaching and learning. And so we do talk about, you know, what are the aspects of a good teacher? We do get into kind of lesson planning. We do talk about, um, that mentoring that I talked about, that cup companion. So we work with Hungry Creek and Glen Allen and Greenwood. Um, we do a, a competition called Educator Rising, where students participate in, in, and develop um, different projects for like an education competition. That's really kind of interesting as well. But that one definitely is a little bit, has more teaching focus on it. Students love that class, whether you want to go into education or not. Because I, again, repeating, the skills you learn transfer. Um, and then, Senior year, they take AP English, uh, language, uh, literature, and AP government. If you were over with Mr. Peck at, uh, here at Freeman, we teach AP government the same way through the kind of the We the People curriculum, which I'm a big believer in. I really enjoy it. Um, and it's, it's how you, you're interacting with the Constitution on real world issues. We actually kind of compete against Freeman. We compete against Maggie Walker. My daughter's on the Freeman team right now as a senior, so we don't talk to one another because that would be, that would be like, you know, me teaching her and I don't want to do that because she's the enemy right now because we compete but, it, but it's, it's really kind of cool to see your kid get engaged in modern issues and, and, and research in the Constitution. I highly recommend if you ever do to be a part of those programs parents go see it because it is amazing. It's really kind of cool to see. It gives you faith in humanity and citizenship um, for, for sure. Um, there is an internship requirement that you do in between your um, Junior year and senior year in the summer, it can be in any career field that you want. Education, engineering, uh, you know, pediatricians, medicine, whatever it is, we help you find it. And then diverse learners is, is my final course that I teach senior year, so I teach freshmen and seniors. And diverse learners, we look at um, big issues in society and on the macro level, and then how those issues impact the educational world. So we do a unit on race, we do a unit on gender, we do a unit on culture. We do a unit on special education, multilingual learners, um, you know, socioeconomic status. And again, my students right now are preparing presentations to um, like look at like the, was, is there achievement gap in Henrico County, and like what are the reasons behind that. And then they actually are presenting to like school board members about potential solutions that they come up with. Um, we also have fun. We have a center field day, social social things. Um, so it's a center field day we do so. High school's fun, it's a great place to go to school. Highly recommend Glen Allen High School.